and welcome to NPS Now, your source for news and information about Norfolk Public Schools. I'm your host, Karen Tanner. And in honor of African American History Month, we have a very special guest with us here today, former administrator with Norfolk Schools, Dr. Vivian Hester, who is also a proud member of the Concerned Citizens of Booger T. Washington High School. And she has some very exciting news to share with us today about Booger T. But first, welcome to NPS Now. Thank you. I'm glad to have you on show. And they have such an awesome thing happening with them this year. But first, I want you to tell us a little bit about you and the organization you represent. Uh, I represent the uh, Concerned Citizens of Booger T. Washington High School. We are a new organization, maybe about four years old, and uh, our charge is to uh, be of support for the students and the staff at Booger T. Washington High School. We are that community connection for them. Uh, we are in the school, we are with the children, we are there to provide support for uh, the staff and just to uplift uh, uh, what's going on at Booger T in the community and to help plan the future of Booger T Washington High School. And you have a, a special connection to Norfolk Public Schools. How is that? <laughs> well, in 1972, I was hired as a special ed teacher for Norfolk Public Schools. And through the years, I've done many different kinds of activities and programs for Norfolk. Uh, and in uh, 2002, I ended my career in Norfolk as principal of Norview Middle School. But I absolutely loved the uh, experience of working with Norfolk and working with the children of Norfolk. And that's why I'm still involved, because it's, uh, it's very special to me. And it's on my heart to ensure that every child has an opportunity and to do well. And you are a graduate of Booker T. And I am a graduate. graduate. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I am a 1965 graduate of Booker T. Washington High School. And that experience is what has uh, grounded me uh, in uh, Norfolk at right. this point. Yeah. Great. And so Booker T. celebrated their 100th <coughs> anniversary two years ago, but they have a very special historical Absolutely. marker that's going to be uh, bestowed upon the school. Right. Tell me about that event. Well, last year we were, uh, one of our members of the Concerned Citizen brought to us the fact that Booker T. Washington High School is, of course, one of two African-American high school, tr traditionally African-American high schools left in the state of Virginia. And therefore, uh, we had the historic background. And so we applied to the state for the historic marker uh, to be uh, awarded to Booger T. Washington High School. And this past September, we were awarded that. And so we're very proud of it. And this would be uh, our 102 anniversary, even though we didn't get it on the 100. We are just really pleased to have this highway marker so that when people walk by, they can see uh, the history of Booger T. Washington High School. So when will this historical marker celebration take place and what time? Well, we're looking at uh, February 23rd, which is a Saturday, and we're having a uh, 11 o'clock service at the school, and then we're having a reception for all the graduates and friends of Booger T. Uh, at 6 o'clock at the um, Half Moon in okay. Norfolk uh, at the Nauticus. Uh, mm -hmm. And we're, we're really excited about it. We are hearing from people all over the country, and uh, we're celebrating with this uh, celebratory yes, like t-shirt. <laughs> and uh, people are ordering them you know, so that they can have them for the celebration. It's just very exciting. We have uh, all of the classes, uh, we ask them to participate, and they have done that. And we have uh, all kinds of uh, letters coming. It's just a very big thing. We're on Facebook and people are calling in wanting to know how they can get a t-shirt or how they can come to the reception. And we just want everybody to come and enjoy it. It is a free activity uh, for the students and for the parents and for the community. So it's open to the public? It's open to the public, yes. Okay. So what groups are all involved with this? Was it just your group that got this happening? The or Concerned was there other Citizens started this, but we enjoyed uh, the collaboratory uh, 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 process mm -hmm. of bringing in the PTA of Booger mm -hmm. T and the foundation of Booger T. And so all together, we have had an opportunity over the last few months to pull this together. And we're just very pleased with the, the level of excitement. Uh, the city is supporting us. The school district is supporting us. And um, the students mm -hmm. at Booger T are uh, involved as well. And so we're, it's, um, 
an opportunity for the community to celebrate. Yeah, do you know specifically where that marker will be located yes. at the school? Yes, it's going to be on the Virginia Beach Boulevard side uh, at the corner of Virginia Beach and uh, Park Avenue. Okay, mm -hmm. is it like a metal plate or like a stone <clears throat> or what would that marker look like? It's going to be on a, I think they said a 10 foot uh, uh, pole and it mm -hmm. is a, um, a good sized metal marker, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's two sided. So mm -hmm. if you're coming or going, you'll be able to read the story of Booker T. Washington. Wow, and I know that's powerful. So why is it important for you all to have this particular historical marker? Well, it's important to us because we don't want Booker T. Washington High School to be forgotten. Uh, in most of the cities in uh, Virginia, the high schools that were predominantly African American, those schools have been dissolved or they've been renamed or mm -hmm. they've been uh, brought down to elementary. We want uh, Booker T. Washington High School to remain a high school. It is now the school of the arts <clears throat> and we are very much concerned that our children uh, get the skills to, uh, for careers. Uh, and so we're looking carefully at uh, where they go from the School of the Arts. And so it's, uh, we're looking at um, where our kids can fit into the community. We're looking at our uh, feeder schools because we, we want the kids to be able to come through Booker T and uh, move into uh, the, the career areas. Mm -hmm. uh, there have, has been talk about uh, Booker T. Washington becoming the CTE school and uh, we like the idea of that and we are hoping that we're able to to get that at, but we want everything to be in place for the children. We want the, the staff to be correct, we want the equipment, we want the, the curriculum, we want all of that to be in line so that when I have a child to go to uh, Booker T. Washington from freshman through uh, high school, I mean through uh, senior, that person sees where their career path pattern is. Right. This is an exciting time in the life of Booker T. Washington it High is. School, 102 years having this historic marker. Remind our viewers uh, the date, the time, and then how, if they want to go to the event at uh, Nauticus at the Half Moon, right. um, how can they get tickets and who do they contact? And for shirts. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> it, it is a lot. We are um, looking at February the 23rd. Uh, we will be at Booker T. Washington High School in the morning for the unveiling and we have the band and the choir of, of Booker T. Washington and the alumni choir will join them. We will have the uh, um, ROTC will be escorting us to the marker. We will then in the evening at six o'clock go to Half Moon and we'll have a free reception. Uh, we'll get an opportunity to uh, do some uh, uh, reminiscing and fellowshipping and it's all free. And to, you don't need a ticket to get in. All you need to do is to come to the Half Moon. Uh, we will have t-shirts available and we sell them every Tuesday uh, at the Campostella Resource Center in uh, Campostella Heights. Uh, and we're, we, we keep ordering because at this point I think we've ordered maybe 300 and we've sold all but seven. So people are excited about this right. activity. And I'll make sure my two alumni get shirts. <laughs> Go Bookers. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on this show and talking about this great event. And I know you're going to have a great turnout for it as well. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And we want you to stay tuned for more NPS Now. Welcome back to NPS Now. I'm Steve Suttmiller, Senior Coordinator of Athletics. Today in the studio, we have two special guests and a little bit different. We have the diving coach for the city, Keith Kopecki. Welcome. Thank you. And he's brought the number one diver in the area, Owen Redfern. Owen, welcome. Thank you. And Appreciate it. Owen, we're going to start right with you. All right. Talk about winning the regional championship as a freshman. You know, it's very, very, very humbling, you know, when a big competition like that, especially when there's a lot of people, you know, staying there and watching you and are really, you know, like looking at you and hoping that, you know, you do your best you possibly can. And yeah, it's just a great feeling, it's something that I really like to do and that's what pushed me to do it. Okay. So diving is, uh, 
a little different in Norfolk because mm -hmm. not everybody does it. Um, yeah. But Mari has been fortunate to have a number of divers in this, just yes, in the sir. recent regional meet, you guys went one, two, and five. So how did each other, how did you guys push each other to, to, to win those, uh, to get those places? Well, you know, diving is kind of, you know, it's not a how good you do, how great you do, like, you know, anything like that. It's just, if you do better than you were before, it's about getting better. It's kind of like a self-promotion thing. And you know, let's say we're in a meet and somebody does a really good dive, that just makes you want to do your dive like 10 times better. Mm -hmm. So it's just, you know, kind of a pure <coughs> motivation thing. And that's what I love about it too. All right, very good. So coach, we got to talk about this guy. I mean, yeah. how good is Owen? <laughs> well, he's just recently come into his own. Uh, he started diving a few years ago. And like a lot of the kids, uh, you know, just starting out, they're just learning the basics. But uh, he's just very motivated, self-driven and pushed himself and he's had some really good mentors along the way. Uh, we've got a, an AAU club that he was, he's part of and we travel a lot and he has met some very nice people, very good divers and he's been able to go to some of the camps in the summer and, and work with Olympians and be coached by them so it's just a, and it's something that he loves to do so it's just one of those things that drives him even more and so he's just really gotten very serious with it. Mm -hmm. Conditioning, and just practicing as often as he can, and he's just gotten better and better. And he's gotten taller, and he's gotten stronger, and that's a big plus okay. with, with diving to be strong too. So, so just for, for people out there, um, you know, the, the coach and the athlete, they, they typically have a relationship. Um, so um, in basketball, you, you can call a timeout and talk to your team, but what do you do, how do you talk to a diver, and what do you do in between dives to either settle him down or tell him, you know, <laughs> Some tips. <laughs> well, again, every diver is different. Some some like to be left alone. Uh, I like to talk to my divers before and after each dive. Some, like I said, some like to be left alone. He he likes to be talked to, uh, and just before every dive, just give that little one little uh, tidbit of information or just a reminder of things we've been, we've been working on in practice. Hey, don't forget to get your arms here, put your head here, or do this and do that. And uh, and that's one thing that makes him such a good diver. Uh, or any athlete when they listen and make those corrections mm -hmm. and he does that he makes those corrections and so and he'll think about those things in a meet where some divers are so nervous they don't they they hear the words but they're not listening and he listens and he'll make those corrections and uh, most of the time uh, he'll make those corrections and and it'll be a good result so all right so um, Owen I mean you were first place and the second place person was way way below you so yeah. you had that thing won pretty early so <laughs> how do you stay motivated throughout the uh, throughout the dives well I don't really think of a meet as you know a competition or anything like that of course you know you always want to win but you can't let that get to your head you can't get like you know you you have to stay humble that's mm -hmm. the biggest thing you have to stay motivated on what you want to do I just treat it like a practice you know one dive at a time and I just try to tell myself just, you know, I want this one to be the best one I've ever done. Okay. That's just how you stay motivated at me. All right. That's at least how so, I do it. So, Coach, let's, let's let everybody in on this. Um, okay. It's just there's a number of dives that they have to compete at a meet in order to score. So talk Perfect. a little bit about the procedure there. Well, in the championship competition, different from the regular season meets, where the regular season meets they have to do six dives. So a lot more divers are able to do that. When you start to get to the championship meets and they have to do 11 dives, that separates the crowd a little bit. Mm -hmm. There's not as many divers, especially the kids that come out, the divers that come out for the season only, not the ones that dive year round. It's tougher for them to accomplish that and get 11 dives. So he's already ahead of the game by diving year round and, and, and having an arsenal of dives to choose from. So that's one thing that sets him apart, especially from a lot of the divers in this area. A lot of the divers are not year round divers like Owen. And uh, so they're a little bit behind the eight ball in that uh, sense of the word. But, uh, he, you know, you have, to do, uh, you have to do a set of voluntary dives, uh, five of those, and then there's what they call the six optional dives. And, uh, and that's where you really score your points because those are the harder dives with a okay. higher degree of difficulty. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, we've had some divers in, in the past, um, but we would really like to see divers at all our schools. So how do you promote uh, diving and how do you get uh, student-athletes interested? Well, 
I, I know Owen was a good uh, spokesperson at the beginning of the year when they were talking about uh, the season getting started, and Owen went out and tried to recruit a bunch of kids to come dive, which was great. But the problem is, in, in Norfolk especially, there's not that many venues except for the Southside Aquatic Center that has diving. And so hopefully, as we've talked, we're going to try to see if we can't get Awards. diving a little bit uh, more on the map mm -hmm. here in, in, in Norfolk. And by just watching, doing things like this, and, and, and uh, we've got kids that are uh, coming to, to our club all the time. We've got the AAU club, like I said, and we've got new kids starting, and a lot more from Norfolk now. And it just spreads. Uh, word gets around. Kids talk. They see what, what's going on. They know Owen. And word just kind of travels. And, so, and coaches see that it helps their program as well. That's right. one of the big things where you know, coaches, you know, swim teams are losing points because you know, the diver, they sure. don't have the divers. So hopefully we can work something out next year where we, we get more pool time and we can get more kids from the, the Norfolk schools interested in diving. Okay. So, Owen, mm -hmm. um, you've got to recruit athletes. So how do you do it? <laughs> and, uh, you know, you see the basketball player, you see the football player, but yeah. you're walking around the hallways probably, hey, who's this guy? You're yeah, a champion. Exactly. So how do you, you know, how do you sell your program? Well, um, I don't really tell everybody I know that I dive or anything like that. I think that everybody knows from like social media, but they're just like, you know, hey, that's the kid that dives. I think that's who I am at my school. But um, a few friend of mine, I, like, I asked them this year if they'd be interested in diving. I actually got them involved in doing some things on like a trampoline, and they actually got pretty good at it. So I asked them if they wanted to come to a practice, they came, and then they just took off from there. Mm -hmm. And actually one of them, they got second at, uh, at the regional meet yesterday. So All right. Very good. I'm really happy that they started. So Tell us how you got into diving because it's just not, I mean, at the level that you are, I mean, yeah. how'd you get involved in this? Well, I always liked jumping off the diving board when I was, you know, really young. And uh, there's actually videos of me from when I was three, four, jumping off the diving board. And m my mom's friend, she always wanted me to get into diving. She would be like, you've got to get him into diving. You've got to get him into diving. And then one year she was just like, hey, you know what? I'm going to do a little bit of research, see if I can find one. And then we found Keith. I went to a little lesson program that he holds. And it just took off from there. Fast forward three years, and yeah, okay. I'm loving it. All right, so you know the state meet or the regional meet that you just finished was off the springboard. Yeah. But you do this crazy thing off this you know, <laughs> platforms, and if you ever watch the Olympics, which uh, you know it's really neat. So talk about how you got involved in platform diving and how high is that? Oh man, first time I went off platform, I was in a AAU meet in North Carolina, and there was just a five meter platform. I jumped off of it. And then I was like, okay, I want to go on 10 meter. 10 meter is the highest one. That's about 30, 33 feet. 33 feet high. And you hit the water about 30 miles per hour when you're coming down. So I ended up going to a meet in Charlottesville. And then they had a 10 meter platform there. And then it just took off from there. I went to a training trip in December, learned a whole bunch of dives off platform. And then <clears throat> I also had a training camp over the summer uh, last year in 2018. I learned a whole bunch of new dives off platform, and then I went to the AU Nationals, and I had the highest scoring dive of the competition off 10 meter. Very nice. And the the only problem is I feel like I'm you know the best on platform. Like you know I'm best, like for my mm -hmm. like I perform best on platform, and uh, there are no platforms anywhere near here. So we have to travel to go do that. Gotcha. And that's just you know, that's where it is. All right. So coach, I mean, how'd you get him to climb up to 30 feet? You're going down 30 miles an hour. I mean, what, what, what's the well, makeup of these Owen's guys? Owen's always had a little bit of craziness to <laughs> Okay, it. there we go. And, and you have to have a little craziness to dive off platform because most people get up there and look down and turn right around and come back. Uh, Hobie Billingsley, the, the Olympic coach from Indiana, the legendary coach, summed it up best. It's 33, 30, 33 feet high and 133 feet down. But uh, he just one of those guys that loves the heights, mm -hmm. and he just, the higher the, you go, the, the, the more fun okay. it is. So. Okay. Yeah. All right, well, great. So, all right, Owen, let's talk about what's next. Uh, you got the state meet coming yep. up. Yep, I'm actually really excited for that. Um, I'm not sure what my seatings are or anything, but I'm just going to go in there with an open mind, you know, not think about how the outcome's going to be, just worry about, you know, like how I'll do, you know, mm -hmm. worrying about how I'm going to do and, you know, trying to hit my dives to the best of my ability. And, yeah, just don't okay. stress out about it. Just go there and have fun. All right. That's what I, it's all about. I got a feeling you're not going to stress. <laughs> um, so, you know, after the state championship, uh, what, what's the, the summer, the spring summer circuit look like? And then, um, can divers earn a college scholarship? And I'll let you can answer that. But yes. 
okay, so I'm going to a whole bunch of camps over the summer, and then you know after high school season, of course, I just go back to club practice with you know coach here, and um, going to a whole bunch of camps over summer. I have nationals. I also have USA zones and regionals, and then hopefully I can get into USA nationals. Okay. Um, I've already qualified for AU nationals this year, but USA nationals is just like a little step higher. So that's my goal this year. Okay, well, great. All right, Coach uh, Owen. You know, we wish you luck next uh, the next uh, event, the state championship, um, and uh, we thank you for coming down and spending some time. We appreciate you having yeah, us. Yeah, okay. thank you. Appreciate it. More MPS now after this. Welcome back to NPS Now. With us today are two very special guests. We have Dr. Noelle Gabriel. She is the board chair for the Norfolk School Board. And then we also have Lauren Campson, who is also a school board member here with Norfolk Public Schools. Welcome to you both ladies to NPS Now. Thank you so much for having us. Great to have you. And I think, Lauren, this is your first time on the show with us, right? Yes, it is. Yes, we're glad to have you here today. And it's a special recognition for you all. It's School Board Appreciation Month. And VSBA wants us to celebrate it throughout the state of Virginia. So first, I'll start with you, Dr. Gabriel. Share with us the importance for recognizing school board members for this month. It's really important that we recognize our school board members because essentially this is a volunteer position. We do get a very small stipend um, every year, but school board members are here because they care. They want to make a difference in our community and local impact is very important. They sacrifice time from their careers, they sacrifice time from their families, uh, all for the betterment of making this city a great place to raise a family and to have a thriving school division. And we have to celebrate that and recognize the individuals uh, for the time that they are giving um, that is so important for everyone. Exactly. So Ms. Campson, why do you think it's important to recognize your school board members, your colleagues? Well, I think you have a group of people who have a deep commitment to children. Um, every single person on the board is so actively involved and focused on doing what's best for our children in Norfolk, uh, working very hard to provide a high quality education and a safe environment for the children. And it, it's, it's hard work, but they're so dedicated to it. I, every single one, and, and, I, and I hope as you see us around town, uh, you'll let us know and then share any ideas you have with us um, about what you would like to see happen in, in, in our schools. And be sure to thank a school board member for what they're doing for your children. Because you kind of alluded to my next question is how do you think your colleagues should be, you know, recognized even in the community for what they do and how they serve on this board? I think the best recognition that we can get is when we see our students walk across the stage uh, for graduation and they're earning scholarships mm -hmm. when their parents are there and they're very happy for them uh, playing an instrument in a, a performance. That's the, that's the recognition that I think all the members want. We just want to see our children thriving. We want to see our families engaged in the school division. Uh, to, personally, that's, that's what I want to see and I think that the other members would share that sentiment as well. Yeah, someone watching this show today may not know what a school board member is. I don't know how they wouldn't, but they may not know. So what's the role of a school board member here in Norfolk Schools? The most important role of a school board member is to really um, work as a team to create a mission and vision for the school division. And then they work in collaboration with the superintendent that they hire and evaluate in order to make that mission and vision come to reality. That's the main purpose. Uh, the other items that we are responsible for are putting together um, a budget along with the superintendent and sharing that with the city council uh, to let them know what the funds are that we need in order to have this division be uh, a world-class school division. Um, and so those are, those are two main things uh, that the, uh, or three actually, that the board does. And I'm going to let uh, Lauren talk about any of the other things that she's learned as, as a new board member. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask as a new school, school board member. How do you feel like you're adjusting to your role? Well, the thing that I'm enjoying the most about being on the school board is getting to visit our schools. I know this Thursday, I'll be at um, one of our schools, Suburban Park, where they're having an honor roll ceremony. And, and that le really back, uh, leads back to what uh, uh, Noelle was saying about 
to see all these scholars um, being recognized for their high achievement is just one more opportunity to see what's going on in our schools. And the other great thing, and I'd invite people to come and look at our schools, especially if you're looking for where to put your child as they start school, there's so many wonderful things happening at the schools. And every time I go in and I see something new that I, and I'm thinking, well, first of all, as a former principal, I'm thinking, gee, I wish I thought of having that in my own school <laughs> because it's just, it's wonderful. Our schools are wonderful. They're doing great things. Everyone's working very hard. And what we hope to do as a board is give them more support, mm -hmm. help set the direction for we can, where we can take our schools higher and higher. Mm -hmm. Right, and this is the first fully elected school board for the city of Norfolk. That's correct. How do you think your roles will be different from the past school boards? I think that everyone on the board is 100% committed to the children and making a difference in their lives and making sure that they have a high quality education no matter where they live. We are not bound by a ward, which is how we are elected now. We represent all of the schools uh, and, and that's a, a firm commitment that we all have. Um, however, I would say that we are accountable not only to the students first and foremost, but we're also accountable to the voters that brought us here. And um, that's important. And, and while, uh, and I was a former appointed member and now as an elected member, I really appreciate the, the work that it took in order to campaign to hear from all the voters, the parents, business owners, homeowners, about what their thoughts were of the school division. It allowed me to educate them on some things that I was knowledgeable about and it allowed me to hear from their perspective, which is really important because we have to be engaged with our community in order to understand what their concerns are so that we can be receptive and address them in a timely manner. This is great. So, um, Ms. Campson, what's the message that you want to convey to our parents, our students, our community, and our businesses about Norfolk Public Schools? I think it's our commitment to, to ensuring that every child receives a high quality education in a safe environment. And I think that that's becoming more and more what our focus is as we've worked through this year. This has been a transition year. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly those of us who are coming in elected um, have spent so much time out in the community when you start knocking on everyone's door when you're out canvassing. You really get a deep feeling for how the community feels about the schools uh, and what they'd like to see happen in the schools. And that's what I think makes a, a difference in a, an elected board. Uh, the appointed board, of course, all work very hard and we're very concerned, but it's knocking on those doors and talking to so many people that when you walk in the door of the boardroom for the first time, you already know a direction you want to go. Um, and so as we all come together, you know, we have a great diversity of backgrounds on our board. Mm -hmm. It's really yes. a strength mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I come from education, uh, Noelle comes from medicine, we have, mm -hmm. I mean, they come from all different things and we all look at what needs to be done through a little bit of a different lens. Right. And mm -hmm. I think that's good. We wouldn't want all educators on the school board or all doctors yeah. or anything. I mean, but we, but we need all those points of view mm -hmm. as we all work toward our common goal, mm -hmm. which is the high quality education and safe environment. So that's what I see. I think we add, it's like getting new children in school. When I was at Meadowbrook and we would get the staff force kids in and they would be coming from all over the world it was so enriching to our school. And I think that our diverse backgrounds makes the school, our, the school board's gonna be very strong. We're getting, we're transitioning into it now from elected, uh, from appointed to elected, and it's gonna be our strength. I think down the road people are gonna celebrate the diversity that mm -hmm. we have. Well, share with us the strengths, like your current and future goals and plans for mm -hmm. Norfolk Public Schools, mm -hmm. what are those? So coming together as a fully elected board, the the first thing that we wanted to do was to really hone in on what our goals and priorities are. And, and that has taken some time. We first had to collect the information based on what, what, what had happened in the division uh, years prior. So we had to get an understanding of what the baseline is. And then as we're formulating our goals and priorities, the, the focus is really academics in a safe learning environment, exactly what Mrs. Campson alerted, alluded to. Um, that's, that's priority number one. Um, you know, right at the same time with that is safety within our school. Uh, we know that uh, we, we have secure schools, uh, but we also want to be receptive to what students and teachers have talked to us about, bullying and mental health. Um, and 
that's very important for us. So addressing the academic performance and addressing uh, safety and security within the school are really the, the top things that we want to make sure that we are uh, focusing on this year. And I'm going to let Ms. Camson talk about some work that she has done personally with a big driving focus on academics. Right. We are trying to look toward the future and, where, and the direction in which we want our schools to, to head. And we did start that in the fall because the board uh, voted to have a safe school task force. Mm -hmm. And that task force has already begun its work. And, and you'll be hearing more about that as time goes by. But the next big thing we wanted was to come up to start an accountability, a new uh, strategically created accountability plan, which we have been working on. The superintendent and her staff provided notebook full of student assessment data so that we could do a needs assessment and based on that actually this week we'll mm -hmm. be going for the draft that's been created will be going to the board to be shared um, and that gives and it's focused on a five-year plan based on where we are and where we want to be in five years and some of our schools need more support and so we want to bring all of our schools together we have a plan and pl that will be in place and it'll kick off next fall to bring our schools to full accreditation and high performance. This is a very active and busy board and we're definitely going to have you both back or mm -hmm. other members back mm -hmm. on the show to talk more about your vision and your mission and what you're doing here in Norfolk Schools. But mm -hmm. uh, congratulations, happy School Board Appreciation Month and thank, thank you both you. for coming on the show today. Thank you and if I could just end on one note, we are very appreciative for all of the teachers and the staff members who work directly with the students every day. They are really the boots on the ground. They're making the big difference and we couldn't do our job without them doing their job and we are so appreciative and grateful. Great, we thank you both and they appreciate you too. So thank you both for coming on the show today. Thank you for thank having you. us. Thank you. And we want to thank you for watching NPS Now. It airs weekly on WNPS Channel 47 or you can view us online at www.mpsk12.com. If you have any great story ideas or events happening at your school, email us at NPS underscore news at NPSK12.com. Again, we want to thank you for watching NPS Now.